Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Part A. Number one. Are the exams corrected yet? No, but they'll be corrected by noon. What does the man mean? Number two. Has Martha's visa arrived yet? I think it arrived last month. What does the man mean? Number three. What did the professor do in the first class? I missed it because I was late. She outlined the course requirements. What does the woman mean? Number four. How did Chuck look when you visited him in the hospital? He's looked better. What does the man mean? Number five. How much was tuition increased for next month? More than I can afford. What does the woman mean? Number six. How are the grades on the history exam? No one got above a C. What does the man mean? Number seven. You know, this is the second time this week that you've been late to class. It was impossible to find a place to park before the ten o'clock class. What does the man mean? Number eight. Can I help you find something? Yes, thank you. I need to get a new rug. What does the woman mean? Number nine. I'd like to open an account. Would you like a savings account or an interest-bearing checking account? Where does this conversation probably take place? Number 10. Why does Jane spend so much time in San Francisco? She has a cousin there, so she likes to visit, especially during the holidays. What does the man mean? Number 11. Are you really hungry? I feel like I haven't eaten in weeks. What does the man mean? Number 12. The traffic outside is really loud. I'll say. What does the woman mean? Number 13. Have you seen the headlines yet today? I haven't had a chance to read a word. What are they probably discussing? Number 14. I'm not ready yet, and it's going to take me a while longer. You'd better hurry. 
Take five minutes too long and you'll miss the bus. What does the woman mean? Number 15. I think it's impossible for me to pass this class. You should never say impossible. What does the man mean? Number 16. Why were you thanking Tom? He lent me enough money to pay the rent. What does the woman mean? Number 17. Are you enjoying the dessert? Never have I tasted such delicious cake. What does the man say about the cake? Number 18. Why are you so late getting here? Oh, I ran into my cousin Carl, and we stayed and talked for a while. What does the woman mean? Number 19. Do you know where Debbie is? Her purse is still here, so she must still be in the apartment. What does the man say about Debbie? Number 20. Do you know when rent is due? The landlord collects it on the first of the month without fail. What does the woman mean? Number 21. My car is making some funny noises. Why not take it to a mechanic? What does the man suggest to the woman? Number 22. Martha's holding down two jobs at the same time. She'd better take it easy. What does the woman mean? Number 23. Did you get to the airport in plenty of time? There was scarcely enough time to get there. What does the man imply? Number 24. You should put some money in the parking meter. Parking fees aren't necessary on the weekend, are they? What does the man mean? Number 25. How is your boss feeling about his retirement? Oh, he isn't too unhappy to be retiring. What does the woman imply about her boss? Number 26. Oh, I see you have a new car. I wish I'd been able to buy the car I really wanted. What does the man mean? Number 27. Did you hear the president's announcement this morning? Yes, the president appointed Mr. Drew head of the newly formed commission. What does the man mean?
Number 28. Were you upset by what Richard said to you? I couldn't have been more infuriated. What does the woman mean? Number 29. Let me just get these last plates put away. Then I'll be ready to go. So you did do the dishes. What had the woman assumed? Number 30. Why did you get that kind of fruit? I wouldn't have bought these cherries had I known that grapes were so cheap. What does the man mean? This is the end of Part A. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two friends who are making plans. Do you have any plans this weekend? There's so much to choose from on campus that I'm not sure what I'm going to do. The football game's on Saturday night, and I'm going with a group of friends. Do you want to go with us? Of course I'd like to go to the football game. It's the biggest game of the season. And it sounds like fun to go with a large group of people. Good. We'll be meeting at the cafeteria for dinner at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, and then we'll go on to the game together. That takes care of my plans for Saturday night. But now I need to make a decision about Sunday afternoon. The music department is sponsoring a concert then, and I'd really like to hear that concert. But there's also a play being presented by the drama department that I really wanted to see. It's too bad those two events are at the same time. You know, if you go to the game on Saturday night and a concert or play on Sunday, that doesn't leave much time for studying. Oh, well. Maybe I can do that the weekend after this one. Number 31. What is the woman planning to do Saturday? Number 32. Why does the man want to go to the football game? Number 33. What is at the same time as the music department's concert? Number 34. When does the man plan to study? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation between a man and a woman. Have you ever thought about all the tons of garbage that's out in space circling the Earth? Tons of garbage circling the Earth? What do you mean? I saw a television program about it last night, and according to the program, there's about 3,000 tons of metal out there in space, traveling at speeds around 17,000 miles per hour. Where did all this garbage come from? Well, it comes from all those space missions that have gone up since 1957. Every time a rocket ship goes up into space, it leaves a lot behind, and this stuff goes into orbit around the Earth. Booster rockets, solar panels, remnants of satellites, and even nuclear reactors. Isn't it dangerous to have all this stuff out there? Some space scientists are worried about possible collisions between this orbiting junk and spaceships particularly manned spacecrafts. However, so far there hasn't been any such accidents. 
Well, I hope that they're going to do something about this, both for the sake of safety and for the sake of the environment. Me too. I know that right now the problem is being studied by numerous scientists. Hopefully, they'll be able to find solutions before the problem gets too much worse. Number 35. What are the man and woman discussing? Number 36. Where did the woman learn about this problem? Number 37. Approximately how much metal is in orbit in space? Number 38. What does the woman hope will happen? This is the end of Part B. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a sociology professor talk to her class. Before I start today's sociology lecture, I'd like to talk with you about the papers that you should be working on. As you know, the topic for the paper is the relationship between gun control and violence. The paper itself is due in two weeks, but I would like to see your outlines by Friday of this week so that I can be sure that you are on the right track with the assignment. You need to do some research for this paper, so you should be spending some time in the library. I would like you to have at least three books and at least three recent journal articles as sources. The paper should be five pages long. In addition to the five pages of composition, you should have a title page and a one-page reference list of the sources that you used in preparing the paper. Number 39. When does this talk probably take place? Number 40. When is the paper due? Number 41. What types of references should be used in writing the paper? Number 42. How many total pages should be in the paper, including the title page and the reference list? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk about Hawaii. For those of you taking part in the trip to Hawaii next week, I'd like to give you a little information about the weather that you can expect there. You can expect the average daily temperature there to be about 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius. This is the average daily temperature in the springtime when we will be there. It is interesting to note that it only gets a few degrees warmer in the summer and a few degrees cooler in the winter. One important factor that keeps the temperature so constant and moderate in Hawaii is the trade winds. These are winds that blow in on the northeast or windward side of the islands on an almost daily basis. The trade winds blow through the islands an average of slightly more than 300 days per year, 
and they are the strongest during the heat of the afternoon and turn into a cooling breeze in the evening. The trade winds also keep the humidity down, which makes the weather even more pleasant. I hope this information will help you to understand the weather conditions that you're going to encounter next week on your trip. It should also help you decide what types of clothes you should be packing for your trip. Number 43. In what season of the year will the trip take place? Number 44. What is the weather like in Hawaii? Number 45. What is true about the trade winds? Number 46. What will the people listening to the talk probably be doing soon? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to an instructor talk to her class about Walt Whitman. The topic of today's lecture is Walt Whitman, an American poet and author of the renowned collection of poems, Leaves of Grass. This volume of poems is a celebration of America, full of pride in the United States and reverence for the goals of American democracy. Whitman began writing Leaves of Grass in the middle of the 19th century, and the first edition appeared in 1855 with only 12 poems. Several other editions of Leaves of Grass appeared throughout Whitman's lifetime with additional poems. Leaves of Grass grew and matured right along with Whitman. The longest and best-known poem in Leaves of Grass is Song of Myself, which appeared in the first edition. The poem, When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed, was added to a later edition. This poem was written at the time of Abraham Lincoln's death in 1865 and contained Whitman's reflections on that event. Lincoln's death occurred in April, in the spring, in a season of new life. This poem reflects that spring can be at the same time a period of death and a period of rebirth. Number 47 this lecture would probably be a part of which course? Number 48. What is the most common theme in Leaves of Grass? Number 49. What best describes leaves of grass? Number 50. Which is the longest and best known poem by Whitman? This is the end of the TOEFL post-test, Section 1.